Hi everyone, welcome back to Card Collects. I'm Nathan, and today I'm gonna to start a conversation about set building, how to make money building sets, and tips and tricks that I've picked up over the years. And I'll be sharing my number one tip for set building later in the video. So stay tuned for that. If you're interested in set building or just sports cards in general, smash that subscribe button and join in on the fun. A lot of your sets prior to 1970 are going to be very valuable even in a low grade. As you get into the 70s, your sets get in that $300 to $1,000 range. Once you get into the 80s though, things get a little bit tricky and the farther you get into the 80s, the more creative you're going to have to get to make money building sports card sets. If you're anything like me, you might have a bunch of near complete sets laying around that you've never finished because after shipping, they're simply not worth the effort. What I have in front of me here are great examples of sets like that. I have 84, 85, 86, and 87 tops and 85, 86, and 87 Donruss baseball sets. And in front of me here is my most recent shipment that I've gotten in to fill out all of the sets that I have here. Using the number one tip that I'll share later in this video, I was able to get all of these cards to finish out these sets shipped to me at the same time, saving me a bunch of money and making these sets worth putting together, making them valuable. Now I had almost all of the cards for these sets in my possession and only needed about a hundred cards or so to finish everything out. But if you're starting from scratch, don't worry that it's gonna cost too much. You can often find large lots of these cards for five for a penny or even less sometimes. I would recommend that if you're going to try to make money doing this, that you plan on putting together several of the same set. That way you can buy these large lots and put multiple sets together. Make sure and take into account the key cards in the sets, the rookie cards or the famous stars. Those can often go for as much as half of the total resale of the set value. So if you don't have those cards, it might not be worth putting that set together. But if you do go the route of putting multiple sets together of the same year, the same brand, then you can look at those cards in a bulk format, buy five or 10 at a time and save money that away. Once you have the majority of your set together and you're only missing a few single cards, that's what can really get cost prohibitive through traditional means. If you go on eBay, you might find a listing for five cards from that set or 20 cards from that set and then paying shipping on those common cards that really aren't worth anything makes it cost prohibitive. Not to mention that you have to go from seller to seller on eBay, trying to find the cards that you need and grouping those cards together. It can really be a hassle. So I'm super excited to show you the service that I use and how I go about getting all of those cards I'm missing from the same place and saving a lot of money in the process. Before that though, I want to share my main tip when it comes to shipping sets of cards. Shipping can also be very cost prohibitive when you're dealing with small margins, but there are some ways around it. These 1980s Donruss sets came in a 660 count format. They fit in a 550 count box because of differences in card stock. They're a little thinner than what they would grade these for. You can fit three of these 550 count boxes if you turn them up on their side in one medium priority mail flat rate box that ships for 
$14. You can fit five of these 550 count boxes in this box here. This is a little known priority mailbox and it's for board games. It's called a board game box. And you see there's some chess pieces and dice here. You can order these off USPS. I have yet to find them at a local post office, but they're great for set builders because you can fit five of these 550 count boxes long ways in one of these board game boxes. Or you can fit two of these 800 count set boxes with a lot of room to spare. So you could have two of these 800 count boxes and one or two of these 550 count boxes. And again, those are, these are large priority mail flat rate boxes. So up to 50 pounds and think on eBay, the large priority mail flat rate is around $18. It's probably a little more at your local post office, but the point is that if you sell these sets in different lots, say the 85, 86, and 87 Donners here, if I was to sell all three of those to the same buyer, then I could save a lot of money in shipping costs. Hey guys, if you're already getting value from this video, make sure to like and subscribe Hit that notification bell and you'll get notified every time I post a new video. Now let's get into my number one tip. My number one tip is a company called Sport Lots that I use to buy all of my commons and some of my rookies and stars that I need to finish out my sets. Let's jump on the computer and I'll introduce you to Sport Lots and how they can save you a lot of money. When you first come to sportlots.com, this is your homepage. So there's a search bar right here. There's a drop down for whatever sport you're looking for. And they have a store and they have an auction. And their auctions are done a little differently, so I'll get to that later. But the real key here is the Sport Lots boxes. So what they offer is you set up an account you can search through all the cards and then the sellers will ship those cards in bunches to sport lots and they will be put in your box. And then once you have all the cards you want in your box, then sport lots will ship one shipment to you instead of all these individual sellers shipping individually to you. So like I said, there's the drop down over here and you can pick your sport and then you just go to the search bar and you type in whatever um, year you're looking for. So 1984 and I would use a brand. If you just put in 1984, it is gonna pull up every listing that has the number 1984 and every brand of cards that come from say 1984. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna search 1984 tops we're already on baseball, so you don't have to put that in. And if you do, it won't come up right. So 1984 tops. And this will come up. 1984 tops base set. So if you want to drill down a little deeper, you can just put in 1984 tops base set. And that will bring up all of the 1984 tops base set or whatever year you're looking for. And normally in a lot of the years from this era, they will have every card in the set. Um, even the big cards, the rookies, or you know, the Hall of Famers, they'll have those cards normally. Not always, but normally. So you go down through the list, and let's say I'm missing the Billy Sample, card number 12, 1984 top space set. I'll hit this plus sign. It'll give me a drop down. And then this, these are all of the cards that are available. And you can see these are 18 cents a piece. Um, so less than five for a dollar and you won't find that on eBay. Um, over here is all the sellers and they rank them based on their volume and 
how well they've done. So it's kind of like eBay in that um, the sellers up here have sold more and have better feedback ratings. And then the sellers lower down on the list have lower feedback ratings. What you'll notice in going through this is that there are some sellers that only have a few cards out of this set. And then there are some sellers that have pretty much every card out of this set. So I would focus on trying to stay with the sellers that you can get the most cards from um, for this shipment. So this guy here, VRR cards, uh, 5,111 sales, I guess, um, and has 23 of this specific card. So that tells me if he has 23 of this card, he probably has a lot of the other cards I need to. Um, they do offer photos, but m for the majority of these common cards, photos aren't really necessary. They give a condition here. So near mint, 18 cents a piece. That's good with me. Now there are some that jump here. This one wants 75 cents a piece for this card. I'm not going to pay that. So we go over here. Say this guy's, this guy's got 23 of these cards. Let's say I need three of them or four of them to put together this set. I can just put that quantity number in there and then hit add. Um, but if I just want to add, I add there and then um, I can move on down the list. So let's remember that guy VRR cards and let's go to number 23, Keith Moreland. Um, VRR cards has 159 of these Keith Moreland cards. So again, um, going off of how many of this first card I looked at, I was able to tell, oh, you know, he's probably got a lot of these cards. So if I need 20 cards out of this set or more, you know, to finish this out, then I'm probably going to want to stick with this seller because he has, he will probably have all or most of the cards that I need. Okay. So I'm only getting that first shipment from him and not five, six different sellers. Um, then once I have all my cards, I will go to my box and I'm going to log in real quick so I can show you what the box looks like. Okay, I'm logged in and this is my homepage for my account. Um, I'm going to go up here to my orders. So this is what I see on my orders. There's pending payment if you haven't paid yet. There's direct to customer orders. So that's if you order something and have it shipped directly to you. Um, and then box orders. So I've got three box orders in there right now. So on your box orders, when you order something to be shipped to your box, you have being filled in route to box, in box, shipment pending, and shipped from box. So I've gotten that last shipment shipped from the box. So that's over here. But as you can see, you're given updates all, the whole time along the way. And this can take a little bit. You know, it might take two weeks for the original seller to get their shipment in, for sport lots to get it and sort it, um, have it in your box. And then you can just wait until you have all the cards in your box that you want and send that shipment out in one package and save yourself a lot on shipping. So if I go over to my ship from box here, you can see I've ordered from all these different sellers, um, 23 cards on this order, 23 from this seller on this order, and on down the line, all right? So this is the amount for the cards. This is what I paid for the cards. And then here's the postage. So this, um, you know, some of these guys, when they do box orders, they have zero shipping. So that's also something you'll want to look at. Um, but most of the time it's very low, 50 cents, 40 cents, a dollar, a dollar 50, a dollar 50 for 20, 23 cards. You would be charged at least $5 shipping on eBay to get 23 cards from someone or close to that. So yeah, there's very little cost to ship two sport lots to your box. And then once it's in your box, you know, they charge you standard shipping rates to send those cards out. For this entire order of 150 cards, basically, I think they charged me $9 for 
for this order for shipping from them all of these cards from all of these different sellers back to me. Now, while we're here, I'd like to hit on Sport Lots auctions. So you see our featured auctions here. And if you just click on an auction, so I'm going to click on this 1989 Fleer baseball box. If you just click on an auction, you don't see a timeline on it. So you see the seller, um, you see the current bid. Uh, there's a place to make your bid. It's very similar to uh, eBay in that regard. Um, and then shipping, what your shipping would cost. But here you see auction status day three. Okay, Sport Lots does what they call three, two, one sold uh, auctions. So the way that works is when an auction first goes up, it's on day one. And once a bid's made, it's on day one. And then after three days, if no new bids are made, then that auction will sell, then that's sold, okay? Um, if he gets to day three and there's 10 seconds left and someone makes a new bid, then it goes back to day one, all right? And you would think this would take a long time, but it really doesn't because people just put in what they're willing to pay for something and they leave it. Um, and what this does, and I think this is really important, it eliminates snipers. So when you go on eBay, you'll be bidding on something and you'll think you've got it and it comes down to five seconds or less, you know, you may never see the bid placed from the person that gets it because they use a bot um, and they'll snipe that out from under you. So you think you've got a good bid and then when the auction closes, you'll see somebody outbid you that you never had any chance to even put another bid in. So this eliminates that and I think it's really important. I think it's a really cool idea. Um, it might take a little longer to finish out an auction, but it really doesn't. You know, if you think an auction up on eBay takes seven days, people are going to put on these auctions on sport lots what they're willing to pay for this item, and they're going to leave it. And you know what? It might go back and forth. It might take 10 days. It might take two weeks, you know, but you're given a fair chance to win that item. I think that's really important. So anyways, yeah, that's a little overview of Sport Lots. Um, I think it's an awesome resource. I use it myself. I've never had any issue with them. And I think you should consider it if you're trying to put sets together or you're trying to buy common cards from different eras, or if you're just interested in a, something that's different from eBay, if you're interested in looking into an auction format that maybe is a little less frustrating. Well, that's it for me, guys. If you've stuck around this long, then you might be interested in my sports card grading tutorial or some of the other videos that I've posted on my channel. I'm going to get to putting these sets together, but make sure and check back as I'm always posting new content, trying to help you make money in sports cards. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.